But you don't really care for music too young. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah, 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 How to be so joyous, hallelujah. I see your flag on the marble arch, love is not a victory march, it's called. In Julie's name, and in the name of the Freydis family, we'd like to welcome all of you to St. Ignatius Church on this day. We realize that though many of you are Catholic, there are many here who are not of this Catholic tradition, so we just want to say how honored we are to have people of different faiths who have gathered with us to pray for Peter on this very special day. We hope that Somehow during this Catholic ritual, you'll find a way to go deep within yourselves to that place of prayer that you rely on to say your own prayers. And together, we'll work up a, a great prayer today for the Freydis family, but especially 
for Peter for whom we gather today. And so, my friends, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Peter died with Christ, rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
and let us pray. O gracious and merciful God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our every prayer this morning on behalf of your servant Peter, whom you have called out of this world, and because he put his hope and trust in you, command that he be carried safely home now to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and, and ever. Our first reading today will be read by Michael Gambino, Peter's coach when he was at Boston College. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. <clears throat> the virtuous ones, though they die before their time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable, nor number of years the true meaning of life. Understanding, this is man's gray hairs. Untarnished life, this is ripe old age. They have sought to please God, so God has loved them as they were living among sinners. They have been taken up. They have been carried off so that evil may not warp their understanding or treachery seduce their souls. For the fascination of evil throws good things into shade and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, they achieved long life. Their soul being pleasing, pleasing to the Lord, he has taken them quickly from the wickedness around them. Yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection his holy ones. The word of the Lord. Blessings. 
The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Slow to anger, rich in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, full of kindness. God is good to all creation, full of compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Slow to anger, rich in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The goodness of God is from age to age, blessing those who choose to love, and justice toward God's children on all who seek God's covenant. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Slow to anger, rich in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. Our second reading will be read by a longtime friend of Peter's, Michael Pitt. letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Let love be sincere. Hate what is evil. Hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Endure in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the holy ones. Exercise hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Have the same regard for one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be concerned for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, on your part, Live at peace with all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Please rise as you're able for the gospel acclamation. The Lord be with you. With a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he saw the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Bill. The first time I ever heard the name Peter Frades it was in 2002. It was December. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Someone, a neighbor in Beverly, who was a graduate of this university, said to me on the phone, there's a kid named Peter Frades. We got to get him. He's perfect for Boston College. He's smart. He can play ball. He helps people. He helps old ladies. I remember he said that. <laughs> and this should mean something to you, Father. He goes to church every Sunday. You better grab him while you get a chance. Well, it was just that kind of thing. I get a lot of calls like that. Who is this? But I'm glad he came. And I'm glad I got to know him. And I'm glad I got to know his wife, Julie. You know, we uh, pray for God's mercy today for Peter. But we also pray, pray a prayer of thanksgiving that he found you, Julie, in his life. Because uh, you had a way of drawing the best out of him. And he's lucky to have this family. Jennifer, Andrew, Nancy, John... 
You're part of the story here. It was your love. You know, you launched him. And we're the beneficiaries, you know. Words are never adequate at a time like this. Never. But if you could stand up, Julie, and look backwards, and if you could look through this floor for the people downstairs, this is the unspoken homily today, that your husband's life mattered to people. And that little comment uh, by Jackie Robinson on our cover today, the test of a, the measure of a good life is, did it have an impact on people's lives? Well, the unspoken homily here today is that it certainly did. And there's more people beyond these walls that your husband, with your help, touched and made better. You know, a few years back, uh, 2000, probably around the year 2000, I was looking at the New York Times, and they had a picture. It was when Mother Teresa visited the Congress, and they wanted to have a picture with Mother Teresa, and Mother Teresa was in the center of the picture. And on her left was the Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. And the, on the right-hand side, they should have been both on the right, but on the right-hand side was Trent Lott, who was the majority leader in the Senate. I remember this. They were dressed so well that day. They probably had those, you know, tailored suits. Their ties were great. Their hair looked perfect. They were, in the ways of the world, powerful, both of them. But no one who looked at that picture, no one who looked at that picture would say that those two guys had the power, who had the juice. Mother Teresa, that little person, dressed in humble clothing, she had much more power to change the world than those two politicians who had real power, but nothing like her power. And the reason why she had that kind of power, because she was authentic, she was good, she was full of love, and she was big, even though she was this tall. I had that same experience a few weeks ago when I went to pray with Peter at his home. I was in the room together, and we were talking. I was telling about Boston College's hockey victory over Harvard. I was talking about St. John's Prep making the Super Bowl. I was talking like that. And then I went into some prayers, and his eyes were open for a short time. And they were looking right at me. And I was thinking, he has lost much of his agility. He's lost a lot of his muscle. He's lost a lot of his, you know, mobility. But when he was looking at me, I was praying for him. I got the strange feeling he was thinking, you're the one who needs the prayers. <laughs> I've made an impact on this world. I've lived a good life. Like Mother Teresa, he was full. And when I put my hand down to bless him, I kid you not, about two feet off his chest, I felt him because he was that big. Why? Because St. Paul is right today. St. Paul is right. And we should all think about this. If we could be more loving and make our loving more genuine. If we could hate evil in this world, if we could hold on to the good in the world, if we could be hopeful and patient when adversity comes into our lives, if we could be more prayerful, if we could live life with honor, and if we could, like St. Paul says, be a glow, be lit up by the Spirit of God, this church couldn't hold us. And the Spirit of God is still in this person. And it's coming out of this casket because this box cannot hold the Spirit of God. It's seeping into all of us as we sit here today. It's going into your blood. Your blood, Governor. My blood. The goodness is seeping in all of us. Peter will be with us because that's the kind of 
power or juice he has accumulated because of his goodness over the years and because of his faith. He received the Eucharist regularly in his life. So Jesus seeped into his bloodstream. And that had a lot to do with why this person was the person he turned out to be. And so, my friends, there is a little story about someone getting the privilege of seeing hell and heaven before they died. I wish we could all have it. And so the guide takes this person on a long walk down this beautifully white hallway. And as they're halfway down the hallway, there's a door. And on the door is a sign, H-E-L-L. They open the door, and what do they see? They see this lavish, lavish banquet table with all the best foods, all the best drinks, all the best sweets. But as he looks closer, there's a problem. Everybody around the hell table is emaciated. They look like they haven't eaten ever. And then he looks even closer, and the problem is they're picking up the food, but their bodies, their arms have no joint. So they can't bring the food to their own mouth. And then the guy closes the door, and they walk a mile down the hallway, and they open another door that says H-E-A-V-E-N, heaven. And when they open it, the same banquet table, the same feast is there. Lavish foods, drinks, sweets. But it looks close. Everybody around the table is, looks well-fed. Is that polite? (laughs) Well-fed. And he looks closer. Their arms don't have joints either. But they are feeding each other. They are taking care of each other. This is the kind of person we celebrate this life today. This Christian did it right. He inspires this priest. And I'm sure you're here because he inspired all of you. You know, St. Paul in Corinthians has another nice line. He tells the people that have been affected by his ministry this. You are my best recommendations in the world because your lives have been changed by my ministry. You have the love of God in you. So when people see you, you're my best letter of recommendation of what I got. Well, I was thinking today, all of you are Peter's best recommendation. His life has made a difference in your life. That's why you're here. So you can all, in a sense, be the letters of recommendation to God today. That this person deserves a place at the banquet table of the saints. That God's mercy, if granted to this person, this person is worthy of that kind of mercy. And so I thank all of you who are here today for coming forth to pray for this good man and for recommending him to God that the gates of heaven should be wide open today because this man has lived life in an impactful way, in a good way. He was a glow with the Spirit of God. And we can be too if we just tried. And so maybe the best way we could honor Peter Freitas today and for the days to come, for the months to come and the years to come, is to try to imitate him. To take St. Paul's lines seriously. Try to be more genuine in your love. Try to hate evil in the world. Hold on to the good things on this earth. Pray a little bit more in your life. And when adversity, and it will, when adversity comes your way, be patient and be hopeful and be strong in the face of adversity. And live life, my God, this is the best, live life honorably. And be aglow with goodness. Light up this world like the stanchions of lights do in Yankee Stadium. When they turn those lights on, Excuse me, baby, Fenway Park. (laughs) When those lights come on, there's illumination. Can you imagine if all of us 
lit up the world with goodness in honor of this good man, Peter would be well pleased. But the world would be well served. Amen. We'd like to welcome Arthur Cronin and Joseph Kowalik, who are going to lead us in our prayers of the faithful. Please stand. We pray for Pete. May God receive him kindly with generosity and forgiveness and the rewards of his deep faith. May he continue to inspire us, to intercede for us, and be there at the end to welcome us in our turn into eternal life. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the love which Pete showed in abundance during his life. May he know the perfection and fulfillment of that love in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who care for the sick and housebound. We give thanks for the skills and incredible commitment of the doctors, nurses, and caregivers whose unwavering service to Pete allowed him to live in the comfort of his home with his family as long as possible. May they continue to reflect the compassion and healing of God who has made known to us in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To all those who have dedicated their lives in service of others, especially first responders and the brave men and women of the military, that they may never tire in their work to uphold the freedoms and protections so important to us all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we pray for Pete, let us remember the deceased, those we have loved and cherished, including Pete's grandmother, Margaret Frades, and Julie's grandparents, Joseph and Gertrude Kowalik, and Albert and Teresa Finn, and Julie's uncles, Gerard Kowalik and Larry Finn Welch. May God welcome them into the radiant light of his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we commend all of our prayers to you today in great confidence and faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Gifts? Gifts? And at this time, the family will present gifts to the altar. Both. You also wants. Yes. Nice to meet you, Margaret. 
Seek your mercy that he should come and do for our living sacrifice. This is what we pray. And let us pray. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Peter, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son Jesus to be his Savior may find in him a merciful and loving judge. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, holy God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices now become one with theirs as we together sing this most holy song.
we ask you to remain standing throughout this prayer. You are holy indeed, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took the bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, all the clergy, the women and men religious, and all your people. Remember your servant, Peter, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all of our other brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your divine mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Ignatius, and all the other saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, we invite you now to pray the words that Jesus taught all of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every kind of evil and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all kinds of adversity, as we wait in hope and for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
And my friends, may the peace of God be with all of you. Thank you. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Don, Billy, thank you. Thanks for coming again. Brett, Donnie, thank you. Glad you're back. Peace with you. Beautiful. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word. May the food of heaven keep us strong in our faith. Amen. You may be seated. For communion this morning, there will, there will be four ministers along the front of the church, four at the cross, two in the back. For those of you standing in the aisles, communion ministers will come to you. Folks in the transept, there will be a minister coming over to this area to assist you. For those of you who are not Catholic, we are once again honored by your presence here today. We invite you to come forward. Um, for a blessing uh, by simply folding your hands over your heart. They can pass it on. Joe, you can help us with that. Make me a channel of your peace. If there's despair in life, let me bring hope. If there is darkness, only light. Body Christ.
Christ. Father Christ. It's okay. Father Christ. Can you hold your hand? Yeah, thank you. Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body, can you go to hand? Yeah. Body of Christ. Christ. Body Christ. Body Christ. Go to heaven. Thank you. Body Christ. Body Christ. May you keep being a good guy. Body Christ, may you keep being a good woman. Body Christ. Body Christ. Body Christ. Body Christ. Christ. 
mighty I Christ. Mighty Christ, Michael. Mighty Christ. I'm sure you are. You too. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. By the Lord of Christ. and reign, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. Body of Christ. Thank you for this one. Is this how you've gone to communion yet? Yeah? Well, why don't you find a way to help you out? Till their hearts be satisfied, I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for our journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Peter may come to the eternal banquet table of Jesus Christ, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. At this time, we'd like to invite Peter's father, John, forward for a few words of remembrance. He'll be accompanied by Andrew and Jennifer. You know, this is so awesome. Everything about it, the tribute has been so magnificent. Pete, for those of us who really knew him, had a healthy ego. It was very positive. He was so confident in his abilities. And that's why he accomplished all he did. 
So when I look out and I see these incredible honored guests, these are giants. Uh, we have top politicians, religious leaders, sports heroes, captains of industry, and yet Pete easily soared with them on eagle's wings. Okay, he loved this pomp and circumstance. He really did. And it's what he truly loved about the church. He loved the structure of school and the discipline that came around with it. He loved the framework and the rules of any contest that he played because he got to play the game afterwards. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to grieve for just a very brief period longer, and then we're going to celebrate his life forever. So first and foremost is how Pete would start every speech. I watched him sit next to me when he delivered some of the best things that we never recorded, unfortunately, but he would write in his phone six lines or six words and then just deliver off the top of his head some amazing thing. So if you're out there and you are thinking this might be the luckiest man speech, it's not. Uh, I think Father Tony said it best when he said, you know, all the words and all the tributes uh, left to pros like Dan and, and Steve uh, have been out there. So I'm going to call this the most blessed family speech. So, first and foremost, you know, we want to thank the entire St. John's Prep community, BC community, and the cities of Boston and Beverly and the state of Massachusetts because if it wasn't for this foundation and this structure and support, none of this would have happened. A special thank you to Pat Quinn because Pat if he hadn't been mentored by Pete and then tagged Pete when he saw the perfect vehicle, the Ice Bucket Challenge, come around, none of this would be happening. Pro teams got involved, but Pete was never a pro athlete, and Mike Gambino and I often talked about, what if we could get the NCAA to do something of recognition? And all four major sports teams and beyond have done so much. But I want to give a special shout out to the Red Sox because if it wasn't for their undying support and coming out to give that ring a couple months ago to Pete really completed his baseball career and he knew it. I want to also thank uh, uh, my St. John's Prep classmates and my BC80 classmates. Uh, Katie Sullivan, a friend of ours from Holy Cross, always called uh, this phenomenon a fop. And she always wanted to be a fop. And I'm saying, well, wait a minute. He's only nine years old. Well, a fop is a friend of Pete. And then when, <laughs> so you're all fops. <laughs> so he took it and then made it team freight train. Nancy and Jen were really concerned that I wouldn't have my remembrance and my memories together. But... What happened, unfortunately, is while I was caring for him many times, alone in my thoughts, I really couldn't communicate with him as well any longer. I always imagined I would be doing something like this, but not at this magnificent setting. We knew early on that Pete was a gift to be shared. Uh, you know, back then, we were new parents, Nancy and I, and there would be what they called appointment uh, uh, play dates. So somebody would uh, call and schedule an appointment with Pete, and then he would go over to that child's house and he would play exclusively. I never understood it because my mother told me to get out, and when the street lights come on, you know, come on back home. Well, one day the kids came to the door and they asked where Pete was. Oh, yeah, he's down at so and so's house. You know, go get him. Well, that night we got a phone call from the mother who was so distraught, complaining that her exclusivity with Pete was ruined. And right then and there, we put an end to the uh, uh, scheduled play dates because we knew Pete was a gift that had to be shared with the world, and that he was. Jennifer, our oldest, has always been strong-willed, hyper-focused, and goal-oriented. She was so strongly independent that she kind of kept us away from her life, or at arm's length, at least. I think she actually posed for the Flutie statue that's just down here, over here, called the Heisman. <laughs> but once she was married, Dan and Jen 
came rushing back to our life. In fact, she was working in New York City, and within hours of Pete being diagnosed, she managed to be there and has never left our side. So she has been our rock. Andrew, he was as gifted an athlete as Pete, and he idolized his older brother. In fact, Andrew was being mentored by Pete so much that we, he was really his second father, and I just relaxed. I didn't have to do much. <laughs> What is frightening now for both of us is he just announced to me this week that he's in charge of my life. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Julie and Lucy, they are truly Pete's loves. Julie, you made him so completely happy. You loved each other unconditionally under the most difficult of circumstances. Julie, you gave him the gift the miracle of Lucy, but you also completed him by giving him that white picket fence that he so often talked about that could possibly be snatched away from him. I can attest that one's life flashes before you, you know, during the passing because Pete's life has been flashing before my, my eyes. I could have stopped this movie at any point in time, from his childhood, through his high school, through his college and beyond, and picked a poignant, impactful story. But last week I thought it was perfect because we had a major snowstorm, isn't that right, Governor? <laughs> and of course, not being uh, disciplined enough, not being uh, uh, prepared, I didn't have the plow on my truck in time. So Pete. Andrew and I would do a couple of our uh, small two families. We would uh, do the neighbors and relatives. Uh, I'm waiting for a thank you, but. <laughs> and there were probably a dozen homes that we would do only in the confines of Beverly. And it would take max under the worst storm two hours. So plow wrestling is what I do best. I get out there and I'm taunted by the sign on the side of the plow that says Minute Mount, and I go too far to the left, too far to the right. Finally, I smash into it, and it knocks off the stand. I've got to get a chain and a hoist and put it on. 30 minutes later, I'm back inside all frustrated. Well, last week, um, it was time for Pete to get up, and Ian, the nurse, and I uh, were putting him up, and I said, you know, Pete, but I could really have used you on that one, and I got this huge smile. So he knew. He knew that you know, his dad was just screwing around out there. Because <laughs> he did everything better, better than anything I could do. But Andrew and I pl plow that route exactly the same way. And probably the majority of all of you would do it, which is to take on a task, go, go out there and do it efficiently and effectively, and come back and finish. Oh no, not Pete. So there was a big storm that happened, and I was so happy that he was home from school on a break, and he says, Dad, you know, I got this. Okay, great. So the truck we had at that time was this literally a monster vehicle. It had a big V10 motor, it had two huge gas tanks, and it only got nine miles to the gallon, but that's okay. We're not going outside the city limits, and we do our 10 driveways and come home. So four hours into this thing, I call him up on the little flip phone. Hey, Pete, where are you? Dad, I'm in Peabody. Peabody? What are you doing in Peabody? Oh, you know, I was out there, and I'm talking to all my buddies, and one of the guys said, hey, you know, my parents asked me to come by, but if you're out and about, why don't you do it? <laughs> sure. Okay, so he says, Dad, then I hit uh, uh, a guy, poor guy wrestling at the end of his driveway because they packed him in, and he was so grateful. It was awesome. And then there was a guy stuck on the side of the road. I had the chain. I pulled him out. And... You know, I'm thinking to myself, who does this? <laughs> so it was six hours that he was out there, and the only reason he came home was because he was out of fuel. So the $250 I put in that thing that should have lasted me the whole winter was gone. But he recalled exactly what he did, how he helped. And on the sixth hour, he said, there's a, a woman up the street. She just bought that small yellow house. Do you remember that? She, she and her adult daughter. Yeah, sure, Pete. Well, they uh, were saying to me that they just moved here from California. They were ill-equipped for this storm. You are a godsend. And he did their steps, 
the drive, and then they told him about some dogs that they had out back. Julie, you'll like that one. And he cleaned out all the uh, area for the dogs to romp. And I said, well, geez, did anybody ask you or offer you any money? No. Well, yeah, no, of course they did, Dad. Yeah, but I didn't take it. What do you, what, what's the matter? He said it was the smile. It was the look of appreciation on their fence, uh, on their faces. So the currency that Pete worked in was just what we were talking about tonight. It was helping others. He was a perfect Jesuit in that way, which is their motto, men and women for others. That's Pete. Corey Griffin, Pete's BC hockey buddy, died, uh, unfortunately, after raising the largest single donation for the Ice Bucket Challenge in 2014. Rob and Kathy Griffin have become such good friends of ours uh, because we're sharing kind of the same path on this. But Rob and Kathy showed us so much strength and courage because within days of Corey's passing down in Nantucket, they were there at the largest ice bucket challenge that was filmed on live TV at Granite Telecommunications. It was a remarkable act of love and support and strength. So Rob, who used to be in Nancy's, we were all in the same class, uh, BC 1980, but Rob and Nancy were in the uh, School of Management, so they were, uh, uh, you know, wicked smart. <laughs> but we've become good friends, Rob and I, and what Rob tells me about his experience is he's speaking to Corey all the time. He hears from Corey daily. I didn't understand until Pete's journey was complete what that meant because all of this, all the minutia that went into planning, what he's wearing right now, it all came from him. He chose the photo, the pictures, the scriptures. He was the one who said, I want this suit, that tie, and I put on his cleats. <laughs> so that was my contribution. All right, he's imploring me right now to stop my John sense, as he would call it, and land this plane. So I'm going to ask you for three things. One is stay with the family, stay with our mission to strike out ALS. It's so vitally important to us. We talked about the miracle of Lucy being born in the throes of ALS. We talked about the miracle of the largest viral sensation in the history of mankind that could have been, thank God, Pat Quinn tagged Pete, but Pete had this FOP, this team freight train, this incredible network that he talks about all the time, so it truly was a miracle. So I'm wondering, what uniform should he wear when he's up for beatification? Because he has to have his uniform. He had a snowplow uniform, a landscape uniform, his baseball uniform, his football uniform. Second thing I want to ask is that you love and support unconditionally Julie and Lucy. The old man down here, 94-year-old Captain Jack, is four generations ahead of Lucy. So I can only imagine, Dad, that the next hundred years, Lucy's going to be around. <laughs> and probably so will you. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm not being too sacrilegious religious because you would always uh, uh, end with this affirmation um, that Nancy found in his school uh, paperwork downstairs. So if you turn on the back of the program, maybe we can all cite this together. Be passionate, be genuine, be hardworking, and don't ever be afraid to be great. That's Pete right there. Okay, and I forgot the third one. <laughs> so he's the ultimate servant leader as we talked. Um, but there's no crying in baseball, right? And the words he said to us that night he was diagnosed is, there's no wallowing in ALS. So when we walk out of this beautiful, magnificent church after the ceremony's over, we're done with grieving. We're done. All we're doing is celebrating Pete Frades 
for the magnificent human he was. Thank you. Ready to go. Please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Peter. May our farewell express our affection for him. And may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. And one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers everything, destroys even death itself. Before our final prayer, one announcement. There will be a reception following the service in the Heights Room, which is on the second floor of our lower dining room. We have a lot of people here. Um, so we're going to encourage those very close friends and family to come together for their reception. But it's in again, it's in the second floor, the Heights Room, and the lower dining room. And let us pray. Into your kind hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brother Peter and the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open wide the gates of paradise to your servant Peter and help us who remain behind to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you, with our brother Peter. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the angels lead you into paradise and may the martyrs, Peter, come out to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Thanks for
can in the silence. Thank you. I will Thank you. lift you from all Great. your fear. Again. You will Again. hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am Those are great. Just enough. They were great. Yankee Stadium thing. Because I, I was going to say Lou Gehrig. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. I have called you each yeah, by are. name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. All the blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. Do not be Thank you. I am the word that leads all to okay. freedom.